Adventures in Murfreesboro is produced in cooperation with Murfreesboro City Schools. Blast your burrow. I don't know. Here we get. Let's see. Oh, okay, here we go. Today's guest is a blast from the past. See, I told you. Murph, a blast from the past doesn't mean they're going to blast your burrow. It doesn't. No, and Murph, I know you're a rabbit, but you really shouldn't jump to conclusions like that. Uh, yeah. You know, Murph. We should all take time to learn about something before we decide about that thing. Oh, you're right, John. But what does it mean, blast from the past? A blast from the past means that something about today's guest is going to remind us about the past. Oh. Why? Why what? Why do we need to be reminded about the past? It's important to remember the past. We can learn from the past, and it helps us know where we're coming from. Oh, you mean like by remembering the past, we know that you look like your Aunt Bessie. <laughs> oh, Murph. Uh, and, and in the old days, you couldn't just go to the grocery store to buy carrots. You had to dig for them in the garden. That's right. But suppose there were no grocery stores. Ooh. Yeah, by studying the past, you would know where to go and look for the carrots. Right, and that's so important. You know, I think I understand now. So today's guest is a blast from the past. But whose past, John? Your past or, or my past? Or... I don't know, Murph. Oh, there's the bell. I guess we'll find out soon enough. Okay. Hi, President Madison. I'm John, and this is Murph, the star of the show. Hello, John. Good to be here. And Murph, should I go sit down? Oh, yep. Hey, how we doing? Uh, hey. I brought you something. Uh, dude. Uh, but it looks like you're already sort of prepared, but I I decided, I found something that I thought you might like to eat. <laughs> you might to eat. Oh, 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 my goodness, oh, my goodness, oh, my goodness. Okay, oh, so well, we'll put them out here, and you can look. We probably don't want to eat during the show, though. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. You know, that that's a great after-show snack, right? Uh, it sure, sure is, and I might want to share it with you. Who knows? But oh. anyway, but it's yours. Yeah, oh, thank you. And something else. Now, this, I'm not quite sure what it is, because they didn't have these in my day. But you know someone named Bugs Bunny? Oh, yeah. Okay, well, this is the best Looney Tunes, the best of Bugs Bunny, and I thought I'd leave that for you, too. Oh, thank you. So you can, you can watch that while you're eating your carrots. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, you know he, he's a distant relative of mine. Bugs Bunny? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Wow, yeah. well, may I shake your hand? Oh, sure, yeah. yeah uh, okay, well, yeah. oh, wow. Yes. I, I can't wait to tell, tell my daughters and, and grandson that I've shaken the hand of someone who was related to Bugs Bunny. Uh, how about that you shook the hand of Murph? 
Murph. Oh, well, that would probably be better. Yeah, okay, yeah, I shook yeah. the hands of Murph. Okay. Uh, I'll remember that. You know, you know, um, President Medicine, I just got to ask you, what in the world are you wearing? Well, I, I sort of was wanting to ask you what you were wearing, but uh, what, just sort of the normal, I almost always dressed in black. Oh. Uh, I'm not quite sure why. Now, my wife. <laughs> Dolly, she was flamboyant. She'd put feathers in her hair and have long dresses and pearls. She was the life of the party. So, does Miss Dolly make treats? She does. Now, they're not the cakes and pies that you see today, Ooh. but she made some pretty good stuff. Our friend Mr. Jefferson came back from France <laughs> and brought ice cream. And that was something that we delighted in eating. And there were other sort of French dishes. And but but Dolly, we were American, and when we had when we had feast at the White House, we tended to concentrate on American food, good things like carrots and <laughs> radishes and onions and that sort of thing. Did you live in the White House? I sure did. Oh wow! What was it like? There was one sad time where we were invaded by the British that we were fighting, and they burned it down. They White House? They did. But <sighs> Dolly stayed behind after I left, and she rescued a painting of George Washington, our first president. Well, you know, President Madison, we are just really excited to have you with us today. You know, we call you a blast from the past. Well, I'm not sure I know what that term means, but it, it sounds like it's a good thing. Yeah, it means that we're going to remember something very important from the past, and you're helping us to remember that. Okay, well, I, I like to remember. I think that's very important. And, and one of the things we like to do is ask our guests questions submitted by the children in Murfreesboro City Schools. Would you like to answer some questions? Well, I'll certainly try. First question. What did you want to be when you were little? Well, I probably thought I was going to be a farmer. That's what my dad was. Uh, but I was not, I wasn't very healthy and I wasn't very big. I was only about five feet four, five feet six inches tall. And I wasn't particularly good at athletics. So I tended to stay inside a lot and do a lot of reading. And as we talked to my parents, they said, well, maybe I ought to go to the university. And then when I grew up, I could. I could be in law, or I could go be a member of the clergy, or I could do something else. Oh, you know, it's important to remember that we all have different gifts, right? Absolutely. Some are athletic, some are great at reading, some are great at music. Well, and some are good at eating carrots. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, okay, next question. Where did you go to elementary school? Well, we didn't have elementary and high school like you understand them today. Uh, I went, I was taught by local members of the clergy. Wow. What kind of games did you play? Well, we mostly did outdoor kind of things, um, hide and seek and that sort of thing. We liked to ride horses. Well, oh. you know, we didn't have cars back then or trucks or buses, so anywhere we went, uh, we had to take a horse. Did you ride horses? Absolutely, yes. Dolly and I both. Wow, that's pretty cool. It's yeah. pretty cool. Well, next question. Let's see. Um, if you didn't live and be president at 1809, what would you have liked to have done and when would you have liked to have lived? That's a great question. You know, I lived through probably the most exciting time in American history. Uh, it was just after I got through college that my friend Mr. Jefferson wrote the Declaration of Independence. Oh. And that was, that was pretty exciting. And then the Revolutionary War. And I spent most of my life in Congress or in the state legislature when, when my friend Mr. Jefferson was president, I was Secretary of State, which dealt with foreign affairs. And that's the time in our history that we purchased, the United States purchased the Louisiana Territory. Wow. Which is most of the territory west of the 13 colonies and, 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 and the Mississippi River. The Louisiana Purchase. Absolutely, in, in 1803 when I was Secretary of State. Wow, that's exciting. It was exciting. And 1776 is the Declaration of Independence. 1776. That was a big year for the United States, wasn't it? It was. And, and the other big year in my life and in the, in the history of the United States was 1787, which was 225 years ago this year. 225 years ago this year. This year. That what? was the signing, the writing and the signing of the Constitution of the United States. And I got to attend the Constitutional Convention in Philadelphia. Why is our Constitution important? 
Well, because it's a, it sets forth the basic rules and it outlines the basic structures of our government, things like Congress and the presidency and the Supreme Court. Oh, the three biggies. They are the big ones, and, and also then the national government and the 50 states, so then you got 51 biggies, if you will. Okay, President Madison, speaking of history, this is our town's 200th birthday. Did you know that? I did. You got, uh, Murfreesboro was born when I was president uh, of the United uh, States. Uh, yeah. Is it real? Absolutely. Murfreesboro was born when you were president. Absolutely. That's, that's why I came back this year. I thought it was an important time to be here. Oh, that's so neat. Tell me, what would, have been, what would a day in your life have been like? Well, 1812 wasn't a very good year for me because that's the year we started the war against Great Britain. Right. And, you know, we had a lot. We thought, we thought initially that we're at the beginning that we were going to be able to win very quickly, but our troops weren't very well trained, and the British were a lot better disciplined than we thought. So we lost a lot of early battles, and I told you, we were actually driven from the White House toward the end of the war. But fortunately, Tennessee came to our rescue. I don't know if you know this. Oh. But Andrew Jackson, who was a general when okay. I was president, he was the one who helped win the Battle of New Orleans and beat back the British. Now, it turns out the war was already over. The treaty had been signed, but he didn't know that, and I didn't know that. And it was a good way to end the war. If you're going to end, it's always nice to end on a victory. Well, we just have three more questions for you. Are you ready? I think so. Am I, am I passing so far? You're doing great. Good. Okay. Good. Okay. What was your favorite book when you were a child? I really like Aesop's or Aesop's fables because they were told in the character of animals. And one of my favorite stories, and I don't want you to be offended by this, okay? <laughs> but it's important for the children to learn. One of my favorite stories was the story about the hare. You know what a hare is? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay, that's sort of like you. Sometimes a I'm hare, a wild hare. Right, a hare and a tortoise. <laughs> And oh, they were, yeah. you know that, you had a race, uh -huh. and the hare started out going very oh. fast, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but then he decided to take a nap, <laughs> okay, <laughs> and the, the tortoise, he just <laughs> plodded along, <laughs> but while the hare was napping, <laughs> the tortoise got ahead of him, mm. and you know, sometimes this happens in school, uh -huh. somebody, they think they're really smart, or they're really good looking, and they start out really quickly, right. And somebody else who goes home every night and does their homework and listens attentively in class and that sort of thing, they end up coming out on top. And as Mr. Madison, I always thought I was more like the tortoise than the hare. Mm -hmm. I'd like to work hard and read a lot and do a lot of preparation so that when we got to meetings, I would be the person who would know the most and could contribute the most. Next question. Okay, number Can two. anybody grow up to do what you do? Well, anybody in the United States who's a citizen, of course, can vote, and anybody can run for office. Now, there's one, there's one thing that not everybody can do. You have to be born in the United States before you can run for president of the United States. Yeah. So, but, but you could be a secretary of state like I was without being born in the United States. Uh -huh. and you could be a member of Congress or a member of the state legislature, or you could be a teacher or a lawyer, or any number of other things. You know, we have a president now called President Barack, but I want to change his name. Oh, and you'd like to call him what, President Barack Murph, or Murph Barack, or? President Barack Ali. <laughs> oh, okay, Barack, I like that. Yeah, it yeah. sounds tastier, Yeah, yeah, it? I like that, yeah, sure, rabbit, like that. yeah, vegetable, okay. yeah, okay. Barack okay. Ali, I like yeah. that. Okay, okay, here we are, ready for our last question. Okay, I hope it's not too hard. Oh, it's not, okay. okay. Tell us something about yourself that would surprise us. We had a pet. Do you like birds? Yeah, I like birds. Uh, okay. We had a macaw, which a macaw. is like a giant parrot. Wow. And her name was Polly, like Polly won a cracker. Polly. <laughs> but she tended, we had gotten her from someone who knew French. Uh -huh. And so she, when she spoke, as parrots sometimes do, she right. would often speak in French. Well, what kind of things would she say? Let's see. Bonjour. Yeah, bonjour, Comment uh, adieu, uh, yeah, things like that. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's pretty cool. You know, we have had just a great time with you, President Madison. You have been quite a blast from the past. <laughs> well, thank you. It's been a pleasure to be here. Oh, and you know what we say around here? What do we say? Only to our special guest. Oh, okay. Well, I. it's got to be good. Okay, you the bunny. You the bunny. You so, the bunny. you the man? Yeah. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Good. I okay. demand?
Well, let's, let's, can we high five? Yeah, well, we'll high five. Okay, we'll high five. Uh, yeah. Okay. Oh, President Madison was so awesome, wasn't he, John? He sure was, Marf. You know, I'm so interested in history now. Some people think that history is vile, but I don't know. I'm all interested and I love it. I, you know, I wish I could learn more about the history of our borough. Well, you know, Marf, I have a place that we can go to learn more about the history of Murfreesboro. Where? The Heritage Center. The Her Heritage Center? <laughs> Is it all about me and rabbits? No, not that type of Heritage uh... Center. Heritage means the things about our past that we learn about. Okay, okay. Hey, you come too. Uh, hi everybody, I am so excited to be here at the one, the only, the Heritage Center of Murfreesboro and Rutherford County. And I'm here with my friend today, Sarah Beth. Hi, Sarah Beth. Hi, Murph. How are you today? Oh, I'm excited. I'm learning all about history today. Yes, you are. Here at the Heritage Center, we like to introduce kids to history. Well, now, Sarah Beth, do you work here or, or what? Yes, I do. I'm actually a graduate student at Middle Tennessee State University, and I work here part-time. Oh, MTSU. I like that place. I think they named it after me. First Tennessee State University. Yeah. <laughs> they think. I don't think that's right. I think uh, it's Middle Tennessee uh, State uh, University. Oh, well. But close. Okay. Uh, we'll talk to her more about that later. Okay. Well, anyway, what should we see here first? Well, we are here introducing you to the postcard exhibit that we have here called Wish You Were Here, Postcards po from Murfreesboro. Postcards from Murfreesboro, I, I guess that's not like email. No, not quite. A postcard is actually sent through the regular mail, actually called snail mail today. Oh, okay, I bet I can beat that snail. Yeah, let's have a race. Uh, I'm gonna beat something. Okay, okay, where shall we start? Well, let's start right here with these postcards. Okay. Now, do you know what a postcard is, Murph? Well, you were telling me it comes through the real mail. Yes, it does. Now, here is a good example of one right here. You see, it's got a picture on the front. This is actually a picture of the Murfreesboro Square from the 1950s. Wow. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Uh, let me see the back. Okay. Now, here is the back. Oh. Now, it's got a place for the address on one side, and that's going to be the street where you live and the city you live in. Uh -huh. And then on the other side, it's got a small space for a, a message that you can write. A little note. Yes, <laughs> and that is actually where we get the title of our exhibit from, Wish You Were Here, because a lot of times people would send a picture of a place they were visiting, uh -huh. send a postcard back home, and wish people were there with them. Oh, I wish I were at the beach. I wish I were in the mountains. Ooh, I wish I were at your house eating Halloween candy. Yum, 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 yum. Oh, okay, now let's look at another one. Here is another one. Ooh, look at that pretty writing. What's that called? This is cursive writing. Cursive writing. Oh, it looks so pretty. You know, do you think we'll learn that in school? Well, I'm not sure if they teach cursive anymore. Well, they, maybe a little bit. Let's hope so anyway. Yes, it's a very great way to write. It it's looks so good. It's beautiful. It's so pretty. Okay, let's see one more. Okay, well, let's do this one. This is actually a postcard of the historic courthouse on the square. It is over 150 years old. Well, look how big that is. I bet that takes some time to clean, don't you think? I would imagine so. Oh, the historic courthouse. Do they have court there? Actually, they don't anymore. They hold court just across the street, still on the square in the new courthouse. So what do they do with that building nowadays? I believe the county mayor's office is in there. Oh, the county mayor. He's next on my list for guests on our show. Here we come, Mayor Burgess. Oh, Miss Sarah Beth, what's this big display behind us? Well, this is our exhibit here at the Heritage Center. There are six panels like this, uh -huh. and they give a little glimpse of our 281 postcard collection that we have here at the Heritage Center. Whoa, oh, okay, let me, let me take a look. This is a postcard of a toll gate from the late 1800s here in Murfreesboro on the Nashville Pike. And this is the carnation milk plant that was built in 1927. Murfreesboro used to be a big part of the dairy industry. Now this building has been demolished, but the smokestack that you see here in the postcard is actually still standing on the corner of Broad Street and Memorial Boulevard behind Haynes Lumber. This is the James K. Polk Hotel, which was located on East Main Street where SunTrust Bank now stands. This is another shot of the James K. Polk Hotel from the inside. 
How cool is that? It is the Heritage Center of Murfreesboro and Rutherford County. Yeah. Oh, hi everybody. I'm here with my new friend, Allison. Allison also works at the Heritage Center. Hi, Allison. Hi, Murph. How's it going? Oh, it's going good. I'm so excited to be outside on such a beautiful day. It is. It's like the first week of fall. It's so pretty out. Tell us about this place we're at. Okay, well, we are at the Rutherford County Courthouse and it's in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And did you know when, do you know when Tennessee became a state? Uh, uh, Take a guess. Uh, 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 1796? That's right, Murph. Good job. Uh, I learned that in school. I learned it in school. Okay, That's okay. so good. Okay, well then after Tennessee became a state, Rutherford County was formed. And can you guess what year that happened? Oh, Take a good guess. Oh, I, 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 I don't know, 1779. Close. Oh. How about 1803? 1803 mm -hmm. is when our county was formed? Yes, it was formed and it was named for General Griffith Rutherford. Did, oh, look, his name just happens to be up there. He, mm -hmm, he was a Brigadier General in the Revolutionary War. Brigadier General. Mm -hmm. ah. Southern, line up! And <laughs> one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Should we march on around and see what else we can see? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Oh, you know, Allison, we've been celebrating our city's bicentennial birthday. That's a great big birthday. That's right. That's 200 years old, Merv. 200. Oh, that's a lot of candles. Mm -hmm. You know, this kind of looks like a birthday candle. You're right. But do you know what it actually is? No. It's what? here to represent that Murfreesboro was a state capital of Tennessee. Murph, do you know when Murfreesboro was formed? Um, I forget. 1811. And it took a whole year for Murfreesboro to be formed from 1811 to 1812. That's why we celebrate the bicentennial for a whole year. Wow, that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. oh, I can't wait to see what else we can learn. Oh, what's this, Miss Allison? Well, this is a kiosk we have that are up around the square, and it's a Tennessee Civil War trails marker. And this marks the Battle of Murfreesboro. And it talks about General Nathan Bedford Forrest and when he marched on Murfreesboro, July 13, 1862. Oh, is that a picture of him down there? That is. Oh, John, you need a beard like that. I don't think so, Mark. Oh, you need to rethink that. Oh, you know, these kiosks are pretty cool. It helps us to learn about our community, don't they? That's right, Murph. And at the Heritage Center, we give walking tours of downtown Murfreesboro. We take school groups, homeschool groups, Boy Scout groups, Girl Scout groups, and just about any other group that comes in our doors. Wow, and, and you walk all around the square and you learn things? We do, we tell you all about the Battle of Murfreesboro and the occupied city and just different neat little aspects of Murfreesboro. Oh, John, I think we're gonna have to come back for that. I think so, Marv, that'd be great. Oh, you know, you folks at the Heritage Center have been absolutely hop awesome. Well, thank you, Merv, and we loved having you today. Oh. Thanks for sharing your time with us. Thank you. Hey, check this place out. Good to see everyone. My name is James Madison. Uh, it's a pleasure to be back in Murfreesboro on the bicentennial uh, of its founding. I was president of the United States back in uh, 1812 when Murfreesboro was founded. That was not a terribly good year for the country. We were involved in a war with Great Britain, but I guess I'm getting ahead of myself. I was born at Port Conway, Virginia in 1751, grew up on a local plantation, uh, decided when it came time to go to college that I would go to the College of New Jersey, which I think you today call Princeton. And when I got back after study under John Witherspoon, who later turned out to be one of the signers of the Declaration of Independence, I was thrilled like many Americans were when I heard the words of the Declaration of Independence, that we were going to be a new nation based on the principle that all people are created equal and that all people are entitled to the rights of life liberty and the pursuit of happiness and I decided that I would devote my life to public service and I did this by serving in the Congress under the Articles of Confederation in the Virginia State Legislature and in other capacities one of the greatest events in my life occurred 225 years ago this year and that's one of the reasons another reason that I wanted to come back that was a year that the Constitution was written by a special meeting or convention that met in Independence Hall 
in Philadelphia, Virginia. If any of you ever get a chance to go to Philadelphia, you want to go by there. It's, it's still open. Uh, in any case, we spent a whole summer from May of 1787 to September of 1787 writing what's known as the Constitution. And the Constitution is simply a document that outlines the basic institutions of government, like the presidency, where you're having an election this year, and Congress and the Supreme Court, and then also outlines in the Bill of Rights, the first 10 amendments, different protections that we have, like the freedom to say what we want to say, and the freedom uh, to worship as we please, and that sort of thing. I was one of the people at the Constitutional Convention who introduced what's known as the Virginia Plan that was later changed into the U.S. Constitution. When the Constitution was ratified, I went back to Virginia and helped get the document ratified, went back to Congress, married my lovely wife, Dolly, um, and when Mr. Jefferson, my friend, became president, I served as his Secretary of State, which means I got to deal with foreign governments. After he left office, I became president, and I was president in 1812 when Murfreesboro became a city. So I'm very proud of the role that I had during this time. I served in, as a president for eight years, two terms of four years each, and then I retired to my home in Montpelier in Virginia, which I understand has recently been restored. So if any of the boys and girls get a chance to go to Virginia, especially if they get to see Mr. Jefferson's house at Monticello, they might also want to go another 30 miles or so and see my house in Montpelier, Virginia. I was deeply devoted to my country. I was a good student when I was a boy, and I hope that I'm an example of someone who showed that by studying hard and working hard, any boy or girl can be whatever they would like to be. Hey Murph, this looks great. Why don't you tell me what we're doing today? Well, we are making an autumn picture out of things people can find in their own backyard. You know, we've been studying about history. Right. Well, back in the days when Murfreesboro was founded, people decorated their homes and the kids did projects with natural things that they, they found on a walk or in their yard or on their plantations. So I went on a walk this morning and look at all the things I found. You found some great stuff, Murph. There's twigs, uh -huh. and there's some pretty fall leaves, and there's even some acorns. Right. Well, you can gather those up, but first let's talk about what we need for our project. Okay, tell me what we need first. Okay, we need two pieces of construction paper that are different colors. Okay. And one is your background, like your sky. Right. And you take the other one, and you cut it in kind of a shape of a hill or something. Yeah. And you tape it across the bottom. Okay, so, so you need construction paper, right? And tape or a glue stick will work too. Okay. Then you decide what color you want your sun or your moon to be, right? And you put a glass on a piece of construction paper. Okay. And take a pencil and you draw around the glass. It makes a perfect circle. Oh, you're right, Murph. It does. Then you cut that out. Mm -hmm. and place it in your sky just where you want it. I see you've got one right up here for us. Right, and then you glue that on. Okay. And then you just glue all the sticks and twigs and everything on after that? Right, and you can make it as pretty as you like. You know, and if you were making one for Halloween, you could put yeah. in a few little pumpkin stickers or a kitty cat. Murph, this is a great art project. Now remember, if you're using white glue, um, the twigs and the leaves can be kind of heavy, so you have to use quite a bit of glue. Right. And then it takes a long time to dry, so be sure to let your picture dry overnight before you pick it up. We've had a lot of fun on our show today, haven't we? We sure have, Murph. We've learned a lot about the history of Murfreesboro. We sure have, and we want to thank all the special people who helped us with the show. Yes, we do, like President Madison. That was a treat to get to see him. Right, and we want to thank the fine folks at the Heritage Center, too. And there's one more thing we need to do, Murph. Oh, what's that? We need to wish Murfreesboro a happy birthday. Oh, that's right. Let's do that. Okay. Happy, happy birthday, birthday, Murfreesboro. Murfreesboro. I still want cake, though. Yeah. <laughs> and we need to say our motto. That's true. Okay. Dream big and, and work, work hard. hard. Yeah. Bye-bye. 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 Oh, you the bunny. You the bunny. You the bunny. I'm